Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5. We're dealing with the subject that we've entitled The Sacrifice of Excellence. And we're looking at God's frustrations with his people uh, because of their lack of bringing excellent sacrifices to God. Now, when I say sacrifices, I know you think, well, Russ, we don't have to do that anymore. That was old covenant and blah, blah, blah. I realize that. But the fact is we do. Um, we bring sacrifices to God every day, sacrifices of our love, of our service, of our strength, our motives, uh, our giving, our, our witness, our worship. We, we do that every single day. We have to sacrifice something to give God our very best. Because if we don't, this flesh will always win out. And this, this flesh will always give God second best. I, I, I don't know if you're aware of it or not. I don't care how long you've been saved. If you leave the decision making up to your flesh, uh, you will always push God to the back burner and you will always give yourself and your dreams and your agenda, you will always give it preferential treatment over God. And that's just not how it's supposed to be. God expects, he wants, and he demands excellence from us in every circumstance of life. Now, by nature, People just like things to be comfortable and convenient, but there's nothing about this idea of sacrifice that we've been talking about for a week and a half now that fits into the mold of comfort and convenience. Excellence is always going to be a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. And if you go back to the beginning of time, all the way back to Genesis, you can find people trying to make shortcuts in the realm of you know, serving God. We looked at Cain and Abel. Uh, yesterday and how Cain took the shortcut. And because of that, God rejected his sacrifice. Well, if you skip from there and you go all the way to Jesus day, you'll find that same thing. People are searching for a convenient way to serve God even during that time. Now I want to look at uh, the time when Jesus uh, cleaned out the temple. He actually did that twice. He did it at the beginning of his ministry right after his first miracle there of turning the water into wine at Cana. And then he did it uh, the last week of his ministry, right before his cruci crucifixion on what we call Holy Week. He did it there too. And I don't want to look at those real quick today and, and look at this idea of people still searching for convenience and comfort instead of bringing God excellence. So John 2 says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. And when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and he poured out the changers money and he overturned the tables and he said to those that sold the doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Well, Jesus is furious. He flipped his lid right here because these people have traded the heartfelt sacredness of bringing excellent sacrifices to God for the conveniences of this temple market, as it were. They no longer had to raise that sacrifice, that, that spotless lamb, and cherish it or buy it. They didn't have to transport their own sacrifice to the temple. They didn't have to take extra special care of it. Now all they had to do was just simply show up and purchase an offering for their family's lives. No sacrifice, no heart, no excellence required. They just had to show up with a little money. And it, it, the church had just made it so convenient for them that they didn't have to think about anything. They had to make no preparation in order to bring God excellence. Also, <clears throat> He talked about the money changers in there. The whole area of Judea at that time was under the Roman rule, and the Roman coin would have been the currency that everybody, even the Jews, would have been using. However, the Jewish law required that they pay their tribute to the temple in the form of the shekel, which was Jewish currency. So the Jews would bring this Roman money that they were using to the temple and they would exchange their Roman money for the Jewish shekel for a small fee. So again, you see everything is all about convenience and comfort. There's no sacrifice. They're not having to put any thought into it. Everything's being taken care of for them. And Jesus said, you've made my house a house of merchandise. He is upset about this because these people have so streamlined church and faith and religion, and they have made it convenient and comfortable as possible. 
You know, I wouldn't be much of a preacher if I said the word streamline and didn't turn around and say that sounds a whole lot like live stream, doesn't it? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with live stream. Our church, did, well, we didn't do live stream. We did a week ago stream because we don't have good enough internet to do live stream. We did that for a while, and there's nothing wrong with any of that, but it doesn't replace the sacrifice of coming to God's house and worshiping Him and giving Him and fellowshipping with Him and with others and serving our, our fellow brother and sister in the Lord. It, it doesn't replace that sacrifice, but it, it's a mindset of comfort and, and convenience. And somewhere we've got to make a shift back to recognize God wants excellence out of us. And excellence is a sacrifice that's going to cost us something. When you bring that sacrifice of excellence, it keeps your heart engaged. It keeps your motives pure. It builds real faith. It ignites a passion for God. And it reminds us of the sacrifice that God made for us. The sad part about this event of Jesus cleansing the temple was that in less than three years from the beginning of his ministry to the end, these people had already forgot the lessons that he had taught them and they were doing the same thing again. Isn't it amazing how quick people will cycle from on to off and hot to cold, just bam, 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 over and over and over and over, instead of just staying committed to bringing that sacrifice of excellence? Well, if you go all the way to the end of his ministry now, it's Holy Week. They've just declared, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And he walks in the temple, and once again, he's infuriated because he sees this stuff happening again. The Bible said when he reached Jerusalem, he entered the temple courts and he began to drive out those that were buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. He wouldn't allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The first time at the beginning of his ministry, he said they've made it a house of merchandise because they had lowered the standards of excellence to such a degree that they had turned the temple into a place where they thought they could buy a blessing from God. Now, he tells them the second time he comes in that they've made it a den of robbers because they have literally stolen the glory and the honor and the excellence that God deserved from him. They've stolen that and, and made that temple worship. They're more about their convenience and their comfort. No wonder God was so frustrated when he talked to those people there in Malachi and said, I'm not even going to receive this. I just wish you would shut the doors instead of building a fire on my altar in vain. Friend, can I tell you something? God wants your very best and you don't have to look very far and you'll find out we were doing today just like those people were doing in Jesus' day and in the day prior to that as well. What do you say? Let's make the decision today. Let's make the sacrifice. Let's kill what we have to kill. Let's give up what we have to give up and let's give God the sacrifice of excellence. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Friday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.